Everyone has thoughts and feelings when it comes to politics. Some may feel afraid of the risk of a war, while others may feel frustrated during a recession. There can also be anger arising from bad political decisions, but there is also hope for positive change. I have a dream. In reality, our emotion and thoughts don't influence the functioning of politics, and we may not have the ability to change the circumstances and consequences that shape our world. Understanding these mechanics and purposes behind politics is crucial. By asking ourselves these fundamental questions, we can begin to grasp our responsibilities and strive towards creating a better world that promotes happiness and fulfillment in our lives. So, let's embark into the intriguing realm of politics. Watch the, the chimpanzee compound, and you'll think, God damn, that looks like my office. So we're not that different from chimpanzee, but we're more complicated than that. But we have a nature. It came from millions of years of development. History can allow you to get out ahead of something. I mean, that's another irony, is that historians are comfortable with novelty, because we know things change all the time, right? When your perspective is a thousand years or even a hundred years, you know stuff changes, you know there are turning points, and you know that the stuff which people thought was unbelievable yesterday will not only be believable, but will even seem normal today. It may be worth realizing that political philosophy brought you the world as you know it today. Political philosophy brought the world Greek democracy. It brought us the Magna Carta. It brought us the French Revolution and the American Revolution. It brought us communism. It brought us the civil rights movement. It brought us feminism and libertarianism. Politics can be hard to understand. Many smart people in history have tried to explain it. But we can figure out the main ideas that help us see what politics is really about. When we look at animals like ants, chimpanzees and bees, we see a powerful connection. They work together just like us. Aristotle called us political animals using political to mean social. Being with others is essential for survival. Alone, especially in the wild, death is likely. Together we have a better chance to stay alive. This need to be part of a group is a life or death matter. Seen in nature when bison band together to escape danger, our existence depends on our connection with others. The second part of the equation is our self-interest and survival instinct that drive us. This force is more powerful than chaos or compassion. Whether facing danger or desire, our decisions are guided by our instinct to survive. It's a raw and honest look at what motivates us. A reminder that our survival often comes first. This isn't just part of who we are. It's at the very heart of our nature. Our behavior is shaped by our biological and neurological structure. It's not about choices. It's about how we are built. This design influences everything from our survival instinct to our self-interest. It's a powerful force, fine-tuned over millions of years, making us humans and setting us apart from other creatures. Understanding this connection shows that we are not just shaped by our surroundings, but by nature itself. Now this is you, standing at the crossroads of cooperation and self-interest. You understand that living with others is essential for survival, but you also have your own desires and needs that might not always align with the group. The challenge is real, and the stakes are high. How do you create harmony without sacrificing your individuality? How do you avoid conflict and violence to create peace and justice? It starts with recognizing that you are not alone with this struggle. Others around you face the same dilemma, the same balancing act. This shared experience forms the basis of politics, a way for individuals like you and me to come together, negotiate and find a common ground. It's about building bridges, not walls, about understanding and empathy. But politics isn't just about individuals. It evolves into something greater. It becomes the foundation of government, a structured system that ensures fairness, justice, and peace. Government takes the principles you apply in your daily life and scales them up, 
creating a society where collaboration and individual motivation find their equilibrium it's a delicate dance but one that's essential for thriving community this harmony is fragile and if it collapses, chaos can erupt war fear and violence may break out leading a government we can trust when politics fails and balance loss our white instincts can take over even the government has a survival mode reacting in ways that erode trust the harmony that united us and revel replaced by lawlessness where self-interest runs rampant it's a reminder of the importance of maintaining balance and nurturing the structure that keeps society together in every society there is a relationship between the dominant and the dominated this dynamic exists in various structures like democracies, monarchies and aristocracies and many other forms of relation between the dominant and the dominated even in the animal kingdom think of the queen bee or the dominant male chimpanzee the one who commands has the power and responsibility for the group's stability and survival it's a natural hierarchy that shapes our society and the nature of life itself Two people watch the same event, witness the same crime, but end up remembering different things about that event, of how language can shape things that have personal weight to us. Ideas like blame and punishment or eyewitness memory, these are important things in our daily lives. The language guides our reasoning about uh, events. Now let's turn our attention to something that sets us apart from other animals, language. Through millions of years of development, we have crafted a way of communication that goes beyond mere sounds and gestures. With language, we can express ourselves, explain things, and yes, even judge them based on our interests. Consider the way other animals communicate, bees dance to share the location of food sources, dolphins use a series of clicks and whistles to coordinate with their pods, even ants use pheromones to send messages to one another. These forms of communication are fascinating and complex in their own way, but they lack the depth and nuance of a human language. Our ability to use words, to form sentences, to convey abstract thoughts and emotion is unparalleled in the animal kingdom. We can share our dreams, our fears, our memories, our hopes and even our ideas. This can aim at building something together in the material world. We can debate, persuade, question and reflect. Language is not just a tool, it's a bridge that connects us, allowing us to understand each other in ways that no other species can. It's a defining feature of our humanity, a gift that enables us to transcend the limitations of our physical world and connect on a profound intellectual level. In reality, living in a society is a trade-off. We exchange our skills for the skills of others, all driven by self-interest. This interdependence is crucial for survival. When we associate, we become more powerful. And when association is driven by action, it turns into cooperation. We need each other to build shelters, trade goods, and move heavy objects. Alone, we can't accomplish these tasks. Language serves as the tool that makes this all possible. It allows us to judge what's best for the community establish rules and create laws and ethical guidelines with language individual efforts transform into collective achievement elevating our communities to new heights of innovation and understanding language isn't just a tool for practical matters it's also the birthplace of storytelling all crusaders safety for you will be only wishes The Jews deserve a state in this part of the world. Violations of human rights. Stories are powerful. They shape our sense of right and wrong and influence our actions. These stories often come from deep-rooted beliefs that make each society unique. 
but it's worth noting the darker side of language as George Orwell's concept of new speak in his novel 1984 illustrated. In Orwell's world, language is manipulated to control thoughts, stripping words from their nuances meanings to limit the scope of ideas. Words can become tools of oppression, narrowing the range of human thought and stifling dissent. This manipulation of language isn't just a dystopian fantasy, it echoes ancient warning like the Tower of Babel story. When people tried to build a tower to the sky, their language was mixed as a divine banishment, serving as a cautionary tale about the power and pitfalls of language itself. Yet language can also be a gift as symbolized by Prometheus who stole fire from the gods to give to humans. This fire represents knowledge, the ultimate gift of language. However, Prometheus paid a heavy price for this gift as he was chained to a rock and subject to eternal torment. Religion is a prime example. It has built civilization and guided people's morals for ages. Stories like this are not mere tales, they serve as moral compasses guiding us through the complexities of life. When you look back through history, you will find that these stories often originated from a person, a community or a group of people. And these stories don't exist in isolation, they are influenced by other narratives that coexist in the same time and space. Consider the founding of Christianity and Islam two of the most widespread belief system in human history. These religions didn't just emerge, they were shaped by the circumstances of their times and the stories that came before them. But storytelling alone isn't enough to spread moral and ethical behavior on a large scale. It needs to be translated into a political system, into laws and institutions that enforce these morals and ethics. Take Manichaeism, Zoroastrianism, or Taoism for example. These philosophies or religions have limited geopolitical spread compared to Christianity and Islam in the last centuries because the latter were often propagated through empires that used not just persuasion but also fear, war and even torture to expand their rich. History has a way of repeating itself, and the politics of today are no different from those of the past in one crucial aspect. They are shaped by stories, belief systems, self-interest and cooperation of those in power. Think about the concept of human rights, a cornerstone of modern democratic societies. While countries that champion these rights are quick to promote their virtues, they are often the same nations involved in conflict that destroy lives and displace innocent people far from their borders. This duality isn't new. It's as old as the stories that have shaped civilizations. During the Islamic Golden Age, the Abbasid Caliphate was a beacon of learning and cultural featuring Al-Farabi, Avicen and Al-Khawarizmi who made significant contributions to philosophy, medicine and mathematics. However, Islamic history is also marked by various military expeditions like the Ghazwat Badr, Uhud and many others, the colonization and mass killings in India and North Africa, without forgetting the apostasy war that started from the beginning of Islam until today. Similarly, Christian empires have been home to thinkers like Thomas Aquinas, Augustine Hippo and Copernicus who shaped theology and science. Yet they also engage in crusades, inquisitions and colonization, particularly in Africa and the Americas. As for our morals, ethics and laws, it's worth considering that they are often guided by people we know little about. People can cooperate with strangers and foreigners in a way that chimps and elephants can't because people invent stories and as long as everybody believes in the same story, they don't need to know each other personally in order to cooperate. Everybody needs to know and agree on the same story. Whether it's ancient figures whose lives and thoughts are shrouded in mystery, 
our modern leaders we see on TV but don't truly understand. These individuals use sacred texts and laws that influence our beliefs based on a specific language and word. The Quran, the Bible, the Torah, the United States Constitution, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Communism or any other story were all crafted by people whose true intentions and world views we may never fully grasp. When these texts become political movements, as we have seen in the early age of Christianity and Islam, and in the new age of Zionism and the human rights movement, they were all guided by colonizations and civil control on a new lands. These leaders push hard to instill in the minds of ordinary people like us that they have the right to do whatever they want in the name of their sacred texts and moral codes. The power of these individuals become truly immense when they succeed in spreading their beliefs to the masses. Over centuries and decades, these ideologies become normalized in society, often to the point where questioning them becomes taboo. It's easy to forget that our ancestors were often killed, tortured and punished to instill these beliefs. When history is forgotten and people today lack first-hand experience of how these ideologies were originally spread, it becomes all too easy to accept them as the unquestionable truth and without any doubting about the reality behind them. So, when you see a political leader or any figure on TV claiming to possess the ultimate truth about what is right and wrong, remember this. The nature of that person isn't fundamentally different from historical figures who made similar claims. They are shaped by a complex mix of self-interest, belief system and stories they tell themselves and others. These stories may change, but the underlying human motivations remain remarkably consistent. The first thing to keep in mind before starting to watch geopolitical news, read history or follow any political ideology or even consume any sort of media without questioning them is the potential emotional investment that can influence our responsibilities in life. Tell yourself that all these people are driven by chemical substances. The most important being dopamine. This hormone keeps individuals like me, you, the person you are watching or the person behind the system wanting something. One thing can differ from one person to another. This substance is released when we get a reward. For us it may be a new car, some cash, a new job or a good relaxing weekend. But for those in power other things activate the reward system, such as remaining in power for longer or controlling people. This can happen in authoritarian regime through force or in a democracy through media and destruction. Using the most effective strategies possible for their self-interest is the main reward for politicians and nowadays we can include companies and media in this category. These people are seeking our consent to obey without asking any questions. When you play a video game, go shopping, vote, watch TV or social media, or engage in sports, big music concert or pornography, you don't question the political domination. These activities help the people holding power to stay in power because they distract us from our servitude and make us forget to take responsibility for our lives softening our will to do things for ourselves. From a young age, politicians and other influential figures use schools and universities to instill their ideologies and belief systems in us. They shape our minds at a time where we are too young to question or change things. As a result, our worldview becomes limited and dominated by the ideologies taught in school or propagated through social media and social interactions. This is all designed to align our psychology and beliefs with their interests, whether it's religious, political or social values. Questioning what we are taught when we are young and what we are being told now is a way to take responsibility for our lives. It's about learning things that can free us from the emotional ties that make us serve those in power. Focus on what you can change and let go of what you can. This enables you to live a fulfilling life, experiencing a new kind of freedom and engaging with the world around you without being emotionally impacted by things beyond your control. The last thing I can say is, as Etienne de la Beauvoisie, the French philosopher, put it, Resolve to solve no more.
and you are free. Hello, thank you for watching the video until the end. I hope you enjoyed the experience. I try to give you a fresh perspective on politics, but the reality is more complex than that. If you enjoyed the video, press the like button. If you have any thoughts or opinions, feel free to leave it in the comment. Stay tuned for more content like this and subscribe. I am Mohamed Hedi Maluli and I will see you next time.